Effective project management in an organization can do wonders for them in terms of efficiency and reaching goals within the given time. A systematic approach and structured processes in each phase of the project life cycle result in yielding the best results. Hi, this is Ryan from Invensys Learning. I welcome you all to this session, in which we will learn about the project management life cycle. Let's take a look at the agenda for this session. We will begin with a basic introduction to the project management life cycle. After this, we will learn about the various project management phases in the project life cycle. And to sum up this session, we will talk about a few characteristics of the project management life cycle. I hope you are clear with the agenda. Also, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to Invensys Learning and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Invensys Learning. Also, do check out various project management certifications to boost your career. The link is in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let's learn about the project management life cycle. A project life cycle is the sequence of phases that a project goes through from its initiation to its closure. The number and sequence of the cycle are determined by the management and various other factors like the needs of the organization involved in the project, the nature of the project, and its area of application. The phases have a definite start, end, and control point and are constrained by time. The project life cycle can be defined and modified as per the needs and aspects of the organization. Even though every project has a definite start and end, the particular objectives, deliverables, and activities vary widely. The life cycle provides the basic foundation of the actions that have to be performed in the project, irrespective of the specific work involved. Project life cycles can range from predictive or plan-driven approaches to adaptive or change-driven approaches. In a predictive life cycle, the specifics are defined at the start of the project, and any alterations to scope are carefully addressed. In an adaptive life cycle, the product is developed over multiple iterations, and detailed scope is defined for iteration only as the iteration begins. Now, let's move ahead and understand the various phases of the project management life cycle. The project management life cycle consists of the following phases to categorize and bundle similar processes in one class. Initiation phase. Planning phase. Execution phase. Control and monitoring phase. And last but not least. Closure. Let's dive deeper into each of the phases in the project management life cycle to understand how it works for a project. The starting stage of any project is the initiation phase. It consists of the processes that are completed in order to kick off the project. There are a few questions that need to be answered before any project can be started. The number one question is, is this project possible? The next question is if the project is feasible? What kind of resources will be required? How much time would it take for the project to finish and so on? Usually while stating the initiation phase, project managers can follow a step-by-step -step process. Where they begin with creating a business case, create a feasibility study of the project, make a project charter and create a project brief, etc. Let's take a look at these project management terminologies that are involved in the initiation phase of the project management life cycle. The very first terminology that we will discuss is the business case. So, what exactly is the business case in the project initiation phase? A business case will provide the justification for taking up the project. The business case will include a well-structured document that will justify the various aspects like cost, risk, and benefits of the project. Once we have the business case, it becomes easier to map the rest of the initiation processes to proceed with the project. Feasibility study. The feasibility study takes into account all the factors that will lead to the successful completion of the project. Now, these can be any number of factors starting from economic factors, technical factors, operational factors, or any other factors such as schedules, resources, etc. All in all, the feasibility study will determine whether the project is possible to be completed in the given time or not. Project Charter Project Charter is one of the most important terminologies or tools in the project initiation process of the project management life cycle. A project charter is basically a document that will contain the following information about the project. Business vision and mission. Project goals and benefits. List of stakeholders. Project scope. Project deliverables. Project risks. Project budget and resources. Then we have the project brief, which essentially has all the information about the project. Starting from the project description, the scope of the project, and all the necessary investment plans, the project management plans, performance monitoring plans, and the necessary information about the project deliverables and objectives. 
Last but not least, the project oversight, challenges for the project, etc. Now that we have covered the first phase of the project management life cycle, let's move on to the planning phase. Also, tell us in the comments if we should make a dedicated tutorial on the processes used in all of the phases discussed in this session. After the initiation phase, we have the planning phase. To understand the planning phase, let's consider a small example. Let's suppose your goal is to finish a marathon. But, you cannot just wake up one day and run a marathon. So, in layman's terms, if reaching the finish line is the goal, then, the planning that will be done to reach that feat is similar to how the project planning phase works in project management. The deliverables or the goal are documented along with the requirements and objectives clearly defined for the teams to follow. Proper plans for the schedules and the teams are created for a proper function of the project life cycle and reaching the end goal before the assigned time frame. Let's dig a little deeper into the specifics of project planning and understand through the project management terminologies how the project planning can be approached by the project managers to yield the best results. Project plan. A project plan is nothing but a set of documents that will guide the entire project. Typically, a project plan will contain the various plans discussed in the next section. Statement of work is a document that is a written work agreement between two parties. It usually contains the scope of work and other information like the deliverables, etc. A work breakdown structure is breaking down the total work into smaller components or deliverables. It organizes the total scope of work and helps in easier project management within the teams. Scope management. Project scope management involves the project scope, that is, the work that is included in the project. The process is all about making sure that everyone concerned with the project is clear about what the project is aimed at and what it includes. Scope changes and alters mostly the project itself, so it is essential that the project boundaries are well defined from the beginning and are carefully monitored. Changes can occur at any point in time, but even the simplest of changes can have a lasting result in the outcome of the project. Schedule management, project schedule management is a process that refers to how the project manager manages his schedule for a particular project. It includes the time that is catered to complete each individual task pertaining to the project's objectives with the desired skills, tools, and techniques. In order to become a successful project manager one has to clearly understand the activities of the project and should possess the necessary skills to plan, schedule, and control a project within its timeline. Apart from these skills, one must also be able to utilize schedule management tools to help them analyze, measure, and assess their time management techniques. Cost management Project cost management is the process that is concerned with planning and controlling the budget of the project. This process includes activities such as planning, budgeting, estimating, financing, funding, managing, and monitoring costs to make sure that the project is finished within the scheduled budget. It's all about handling the project's financial requirements. This phase covers and tracks the project's total expenditure against the actual budget to make sure that the project is moving on track and within the fixed budget. Quality management Project quality management is the main criteria when it comes to determining the value of a project. The project at all times is required to meet the standards which were originally defined for it. The bottom line is that the quality of the project has to meet the needs of the stakeholders. Resource management, it's all about how the project manager runs the project team. Firstly, he has to understand what resources, people, equipment, facilities, funding, are required to complete the project at hand and then organize a team to execute the work involved. This method mainly concentrates on how the project is carried out utilizing the desired resources to complete a project activity. Communication management, as the name suggests it is mostly about communication. 80% of the project manager's job is to do with communication. Project communication is what keeps all the team members on the same page, if there exists a gap in the communication level, the project can have a negative impact on the final product of project. Communication has to take place between the project manager, his team members, and the stakeholders involved in the project. Risk management. Initially in the project risk management process the project manager should conduct risk management work and then identify and analyze risks. Later he or she should develop a risk response plan, which will control risks on an ongoing basis. These methods are introduced one by one to understand and assess the risks related to the project. It all depends on how one performs quantitative and qualitative risk assessments. Stakeholder management. Getting stakeholders involved in the project right from the beginning is crucial because they are the ones who decide on what changes are to be made to meet their requirements. 
If the project manager fails to involve them at the initial stage, the changes set forth by the stakeholders at a later stage will hamper the quality and value of the project. The project plan ensures great visibility to everyone involved in the project along with great risk management strategies, contingency plans, etc. Let's move on to the next phase of the project management life cycle. After the planning phase comes the execution phase, which is the most important and the backbone of the project management life cycle. The project execution process is the easiest to understand among all the other project management life cycle phases. Let's try to understand with a similar example to running a marathon. Let's suppose you are trying to do a 500 km road trip across Europe. You have done all the initial feasibility studies and the planning regarding the budget and other important aspects of the trip. Now, when it comes down to actually going on the trip is when the project execution phase will be started. And, the phase continues until you reach the destination. Okay, let's stick to a rather project management savvy explanation for the execution phase. After all the project plans and schedules are created. The execution phase includes executing those tasks in the project plan, managing the teams, and making sure the deliverables are being delivered within the specified time. So, how does the entire process take place? Let's dig a little deeper and understand various terminologies to understand how it all works. Project deliverables, the very first objective is to get all the deliverables completed in due time. And the responsibility of the project manager here is to make sure that all the deliverables are being delivered without compromising on the quality of the deliverables. Status review meetings, to monitor the project progress, the project managers hold status review meetings with the project team. One such example is a daily stand-up meeting that ensures a timely update on the status of the work done in the project. Contingency plans and problem solving. Moreover, the other responsibility lies in managing the team during shortcomings and solving their problems with ease. Any contingency plans to curb the shortcomings are implemented so that the project does not jeopardize the overall progress before the project is delivered. These responsibilities sum up the execution phase in the project management life cycle. Let's move on to the next phase in the project management life cycle. After the execution phase, comes the control and monitoring phase in the project life cycle. The control and monitoring phase mainly consists of the processes that make sure that the project is on track and is moving forward according to the project plans and other factors like budget and time. It works along with the execution phase which allows the project managers to make sure any of the shortcomings are being fixed on the go. Also, making it easier for them to monitor the progress of the project. Let's dig a little deeper and understand various terminologies in the control and monitoring phase that help the project. Quality assurance that teams are required to maintain certain quality standards with the deliverables. After an elaborate communication with the stakeholders, considering all the client requirements, certain quality standards are set for the deliverables. The teams make sure the quality standards are met with each of the deliverables and fix any issues that may exist in case of shortcomings. Cost tracking, the project's success is measured by the timely delivery, quality of the deliverables, and the cost that it has used throughout the project. A project can go way over the allocated budget due to numerous factors including time delays, iterations, etc. So, in the control and monitoring stage, the cost is tracked for the project so that it does not go over the specified budget in the plan. Project performance, with the progress of the project, it becomes fairly important to manage the teams and track the performance of the project. From a start to finish perspective, various project management tools like Scrum slash Kanban boards can give full visibility of the project performance with clarity and contingency planning to reduce the shortcomings. Project objectives and requirements. Also, in the control and monitoring stage, the project objectives and requirements are monitored. To make sure that the project deliverables are up to the mark and fulfill all the requirements set by the client. Now, we have discussed the control and monitoring phase of the project management life cycle. Let's discuss the closing stage of the project. The closing phase is how you will deliver the project deliverables to the concerned stakeholders or clients. And make sure everything has been done according to the plan and project requirements. And, most importantly, understand the learning from the whole project to make sure the positives are maximized in the next project and the negatives are reduced as much as the project will allow. Let's dig a little deeper and understand various aspects of closing the project. Project performance is the most important thing while closing the project. The team submit their deliverables and review their deliverables to see if they are matching the requirements. The next step being, releasing the project resources and finally the project review. Which will need two major discoveries. 
One is if the project is finished within time and the budget allocated to it. The latter being, how the team was managed. Also, the quality assurance of all the deliverables before the project is declared closed. It all comes under project performance. Retrospective analysis. Another aspect of closing the project is the retrospective analysis. Where the teams review their performance and look for positives and negatives during the whole project. This is a good practice and all the findings are documented for future references in similar projects to avoid shortcomings and improve efficiency and productivity. Let's also take a look at some general characteristics of the project management life cycle. And tell us in the comments if you want us to make dedicated tutorials on each of the project management life cycle. Let's also discuss a few characteristics of the project life cycle. To understand why it is important and how it can transform the project management process regardless of how complicated the projects are. The generic life cycle structure commonly exhibits the following characteristics. At the start, cost and staffing levels are low and reach a peak when the work is in progress. It again starts to drop rapidly as the project begins to halt. The typical cost and staffing curve does not apply to all projects. Considerable expenses are required to secure essential resources early in its life cycle. Risk and uncertainty are at their peak at the beginning of the project. These factors drop over the life cycle of the project as decisions are reached, and deliverables are accepted. The ability to affect the final product of the project without impacting the cost drastically is highest at the start of the project, and decreases as the project advances towards completion. It is clear quite obvious that the cost of making new changes and rectifying errors increases as the project approaches completion. These features are present almost in all kinds of project life cycles but in different ways or to different degrees. Adaptive life cycles are developed particularly with the intent of keeping stakeholder influences higher. And the cost of change is lower all through the life cycle than in predictive life cycles. Let's take a look at how knowledge on project life cycle benefits an organization. It helps professional services teams to be more proficient and profitable. It helps the organization in overall improvement. It makes the flow of communication easier. It emphasizes reporting and examining previous projects. With this, we have come to the end of the session. If you have any questions, please tell us in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Invensys Learning to learn more about project management. Thank you.